Welcome to Inside Arvada, the City of Arvada's podcast, where we bring you conversations with the people who make Arvada a thriving community. Hear stories about the past, present, and future of Arvada through the lens of the city team members who help make it all happen. Explore the complex topics impacting our community. From the roads you drive, to the water you drink, the parks where you play, to what your neighbors think. Join us as we take you Inside Arvada. Hello and welcome to episode nine of Inside Arvada, the City of Arvada's official podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Excited for today's episode. We have our boss on as a guest, yeah. Rachel Kuro Iwa. She is the communications and engagement manager for the city. And we're having her on to talk about the city's 120th anniversary celebration that's been going on and continues to go on all summer long. And so Rachel has been with the city since 2019. She started off as the infrastructure communications manager, and she's been in her current role since 2022. Uh, Prior to the city, she was at the University of Colorado, Denver, where she worked for 10 years doing communication and recruitment for the um, for CU Denver, and she's also still an instructor there for uh, the communication department at CU Denver. And as always, I'm joined by my co-host today, Katie Patterson. Hi, Katie. Hey, Sean. Really excited to talk with our boss today. Um, it was really great to have her on, not only to hear about um, what's going on to celebrate this summer, um, the 120th anniversary, but also just a ton of really fun, interesting history about Arvada. I think you know, most people probably don't take the time to kind of know the history or know where to go to find that history. And so um, some super cool information, um, everything from finding gold in Arvada to um, really getting its roots in farming as a community. The, what is still there is the flour mill in Old Town is something we highlight um, a couple of times in the episode. And there's a lot of cool history there, um, including she'll talk about uh some goods from Arvada being served to two presidents in the 1920s. So let's dig in. Hi, Rachel. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're so excited to have you on. So before we dive in to talk about the 120th anniversary, tell us just a little bit about yourself and what you do here at the city. Sure. So my name is Rachel Kuro Iwa. I'm the Director of Communications and Engagement for the City of Arvada. Um, And in that role, I oversee our communication staff and our engagement programs, um, which are opportunities for neighbors and um, other folks to give us feedback on the direction of the city. And so we wanted to have you on right now because all summer long, the city has been celebrating its 120th anniversary. Um, And so that is going back to 1904, the date in which we were incorporated. Um, How um, can people join in the celebration? What sort of things are going on um, right now that people can look forward to and and participate? Sure. So um, we've had some events starting in June, um, but one that is coming up that people can still attend is Arvada Days, um, and that is the City of Arvada's uh, kind of end of summer celebration. Um, It's August 24th, which coincidentally is the exact anniversary um, of our incorporation, and that will be the culmination of our celebration. That's at Clear Creek Valley Park, um, and it's a fun day for families to come together. But um, we've got lots of stuff going on uh, just throughout the summer with Second Saturdays and Old Town and things like that. Um, We also, the city put together a short digital walking tour of Old Town, um, which can be found on the visitor center website and other places. It's just, I think about 12 stops um, where people can read just a couple sentences about some significant buildings in old town. Um, If anybody is interested in a more um, in-depth tour, they can always contact the historic society um, and get a personal walking tour of all of the important buildings in old town. So this is just a wet your appetite kind of walking tour. Um, lots of businesses are doing specials and promotions. Um, and those can be things from uh, a special beer, um, deals on 
food and drinks uh, and other services, um, as well as just kind of acknowledgments and celebrations. So for a complete list of everything going on, um, I encourage folks to to go to visit arvada.org. Um, and there's a page that has the history celebration up there. So um, just lots going on. We always has, always have lots going on in Arvada, but this summer especially. Yeah, I was uh, on that uh, Visitor Center website recently, and there's a lot of businesses that are participating, a lot of different kinds of promotions. And so there's sort of whatever you're looking for, you can find a special. And it's really cool that we we were able to get that many businesses to participate in this in this celebration. So yeah. be sure to check out that list on visitarvada.org. Um, so, you know, we mentioned the significance of 1904 and that that was the year Arvada was incorporated as a town. What does that mean? I mean, was there an Arvada before 1904? What does it mean to be incorporated? Yeah. So um, that's a great question. In 1870, that is when Benjamin Wadsworth and his his wife um, kind of established Arvada. So um, Benjamin Wadsworth filed the first official town plat with the county, Jefferson County. A plat is really just a map. So um, he and another family, the Reno family, um, had really kind of established what the town, what the streets would be. So they they mapped out the streets, um, which is really centered in what is our now old town. Uh, but then um, Mr. Reno kind of had maybe not cold feet, but didn't want to really like move forward. Um, and uh, so Mr. Wadsworth like filed it. So he was really the person who kind of said, this is a settlement that is um, that we're establishing. But it was just a settlement at that point. Um, and In 1870 as well, the Colorado Central Railroad announced that they would do regular passenger service between Denver and Golden, and they would have a stop in Arvada. So between the plat and the stop, that's what really put Arvada on the map. Um, And uh, I just want to kind of do a sidetrack to um, how we got the name Arvada. So um, Benjamin Wadsworth's wife... Her brother-in-law, Hiram Arvada Haskins, um, had been a, he had lived with his family in this area. It was really known as Ralston Point at that time. Um, and so he moved away uh, to other places in, um, uh, I think, Georgetown, so kind of went up into the mountains a bit. Um, and so to acknowledge his 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 establishment here, um, she named the town after him. So we get the name Arvada from his middle name. And then his middle name really comes from a biblical origin. So um, that's it's an unusual town name. And that's kind of where we got it. Um once the railroad was established, uh, they said they would do regular mail delivery, um, but we had to have a post office. So Benjamin Wadsworth registered as the postmaster for Arvada um, with the federal government. And so that meant that we could get mail service. So his house was the post office and the train would just throw bags of mail <laughs> as they like went by. Um, and he and his wife would collect it and sort it. Um, and then uh, folks in town would, would stop by. So that's how we were established and named initially. Then between 1870 and 1904, um, there were a couple of efforts to um, incorporate as a town. And so what incorporation is, it's it's sort of these legal um, documents that establish a self-governing municipality. And whether you're a town or a city is really based on your population. Um, so we had a couple uh, votes that were voted down. So folks didn't want to become a a self-governing municipality. Um, But, you know, kind of in the lead up to the successful vote in 1904, um, there were a couple of things that kind of prompted people to to think, okay, now is time. Um, Jefferson County was really growing and um, we couldn't get maybe this level of services we wanted from the county at the time. Our roads were not in great shape. Our sidewalks were, you know, wood, planks. Roads were dirt. Um, And uh, that was uh, 
you know, people didn't like that. Um, we had kind of ongoing water woes that, you know, could we, people were drill, had, you know, personal wells, drilling wells, but do we have water for the, the, um, for the, the people who lived here. Um, and then another one is um, management of liquor. So folks may not know, but Old Town, there was like a dry side and a wet side. So there was a side where you couldn't drink, and then there was a side where you, you could. But somebody opened um, like a drinking establishment without county approval, and folks were like, okay, we need to be a town so that we can manage um liquor licenses, essentially. So that's when we had this successful vote in 1904. um, And that established us as a self-governing town. Um, And and initially, we had a we had a town board, um, and a and a mayor who governed um, the town. Yeah. And so I've always been I'm curious what the distinction is on the population size between town and city. Like when did do you cross over from a yeah. town of Arvada to city of Arvada? I'll probably put you on the spot a little bit here. Um, no. So it was in, I think, the 1970s um, that we made the the population trip from town to city. Um, and what's really great, I, well, I think it's a funny way of calling it, is um, when that happened, like the state of Colorado is like, okay, now you are, you qualify as what's known as a second rate city, which is kind of funny. <laughs> this is like kind of feels rough, but um, it's based on the population. And so we had um, in by the 70s had triggered that um, level to go from a town to a city. Um, and it was about in that time, too, that we shifted from a um, like a mayor and council governing to a city manager style of government. And that is different um, from like Denver, for, exa- for example, where it's a, what's known as a strong mayor. Um, so the mayor is really guiding the day to day operations as well as policy. Um, so it, when we switched from a town to a city, we also around about the same time switched to um, a city manager where the, the city managers over the day to day and our, our council um, drive the policy and direction of the city. Got it. And so, yeah, one way to know. So when you're in Arvada, there are still some little pockets yes. of like incorpor- unincorporated Jefferson County. And one way I can, I'm always curious as you look at the street sign. So if you see like a green street sign, kind of like northwest area of town, that's unincorporated. And then you'll drive like another block and it'll be a blue kind of city of Arvada sign. So that's just something I, because I used to work for Jefferson County. So it's always something I look for as I'm driving around. So even though you're kind of in Arvada proper, some there are still some pockets that are unincorporated. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of, um, just as we've grown, you know, we different landowners asked to be annexed into the city as part of the development. And so um, that's how you grow as a city. And we've we've annexed in land, but left um, different pockets that have not wanted to be, uh, have not, they've not asked, they don't want to be part of the city. And so we do, and we do, being in two counties, we have those unincorporated Adams County, unincorporated Jefferson County, and it can get confusing for residents. Um, So we don't expect anyone to like know this, but um, there are definitely times when, you know, as a, as an agency, people will reach out with, um, you know, issues or something like that. And it, and it can feel a little bit like, um, you know, we never want to give anyone the runaround, but there are times when we have to say like, that's not city land. And that's confusing because it's literally bounded on all sides by city property or city, you know, this is it within the, the, um, the incorporated part i'm thinking of over by um ward road and like 58 there's a couple like more agricultural um parcels in there and a lot of the townhomes and stuff have have gone up around them um and they're like on all sides it's city of arvada but they're still unincorporated jefferson county um so it yeah it's it's interesting yeah, I'm glad you made the distinction between the 1870 date and the 1904 date because if you, you know, 
get off I-70 on the wads and you see, you know, city of Arvada, 1870. And they're like, wait a second, I thought you're celebrating 1904. So 1870 is kind of when we were literally on the map. 1904 mm-hmm. is when we officially became the town of Arvada. Yeah. So glad you made that distinction there. Um, speaking of kind of going back in history, how did we get our start as a town? I know, um, you know, you mentioned the name Ralston and the discovery of our first documented discovery of gold was a big part of that. So how did we kind of um, get our start as a town back in the 1800s? Yeah. So in 1850, um, in I think June of 1850, Lewis Ralston, who was a prospector from Georgia, um, he and his party were just kind of moving through the area. Um, they set up camp on the bank of what is now um, the confluence of Clear Creek and Ralston Creek. Um, and he, you know, looking for gold and just got in the creek and and found a little bit of gold. Um and that uh, dedicated resident, um, Lewis, Lois Lindstrom, um, went through the process to show that this was the first documented um, gold find in Colorado. Um, a lot of, for years before that, um, an 1859 gold um, strike in Denver was considered the first one in the Rocky Mountain region, but she proved that. Lewis Ralston's was the first. Um, And so that really was one of the things that brought people out here um, was that, you know, they heard word that um, Lewis Ralston had found gold. Interestingly enough, um, Lewis Ralston just passed through. He did not establish uh, a residence here or anything like that. Um, He was here for a, a few days, kept going, went back to Georgia, um, and then never really um, wanted to be back in Colorado looking for gold. So um, his name's on a lot of stuff, but not one of our founding um, founding folks. Um, so one of the things that we could say is gold. while gold brought settlers to this area, farming kept them here. Um, so once people came out here and, and maybe didn't make their fortune um, with gold immediately, uh, they did. It was good land for farming. Um, the railroad, that development of the railroad stopping here, um, later the, the flour mill being right by the railroad. This really, Arvada became a place where farmers could um, grow their crops, get them, you know, get wheat processed into flour and then onto the rail and and out. Um, so it was just a great place to, you know, start a farm or a ranch um, and have quick access to a railroad. Yeah. And um, another part of the story I think that I've heard you mention um, is that we do have, you know, obviously there were people here before (laughs) um, Ralston and the discovery of gold. And, you know, there were Native Americans and Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes were living in the area. I think there were also um, Ute tribe as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I think, something we also wanted to point out in the telling of our history and the story of this area is that, you know, it didn't all start with gold. There were people inhabiting this land long before that as well. And so... um, Speaking of Gold Strike specifically, you know, we were redesigning that park. And as part of the um, plans for that is to put some interpretive signage that tells the story of the the Gold Strike and the documented gold, but also some of the other um, people's histories and the indigenous people who lived there before. So um, that project is slowly moving forward. So keep an eye on that. I'm excited to see that kind of come to fruition. So, um, yeah, it's really, um, thank you for bringing up indigenous folks and, um, you know, telling the story of, of being coming a settled town. We do tend to focus on our European settlers. Um, and you know, while that is very important, it is, you know, it's, it's good to keep in mind that folks were using this land long before our European settlers were here. Um, and I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to Gold Strike Park. I think it'll really activate that corner of town and um, just bring a lot of vibrancy uh, to an, an area that's important to our history, but also can be so great for our future. And I don't know if we actually said that that location of Gold Strike Park is where Lewis yeah. Ralston found gold, found this gold, yes. and that kind of is implied in the name, but it's yeah. the <laughs> confluence of the Ralston Creek and Clear Creek, Clear Creek, yeah, um, kind of near Sheridan and um, 76. 
yeah. Sheridan and Ralston Road. Yeah. yeah. And there's a beautiful, um, iconic bridge out there right now. So there's, you know, in that area, there's there's some, and there's some signage and, and things like that. But the the vision for um, Gold Strike Park in the future is going to be really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting project. Um, before we go to lightning round, what else should people know? We know there are some fun facts about <laughs> Arvada and one that is your particular favorite. So tell us yes. a little bit about some Well, I do. Um, I love to collect sort of uh, silly, not silly, but uh, lesser known history or just um, things that don't seem that important about uh, places because I do think that those kinds of um, character is what makes uh makes different cities or places um, unique. Uh, And the one I love about Arvada is that it was once known as the celery capital of the world. Um, And the reason for that was because, uh, like I mentioned, there are farm, like this was a great place for farming, um, but a couple of farms um, where they grew a a really particular kind of celery called Pascal celery, and this was white. Um, it was much more tender and sweet um, than the celery we get in grocery stores right now. Um, it apparently took like all year to grow. It was just like a lot of prep work um, to to grow the celery. And so it was ready for harvest or Thanksgiving and Christmas time. Um, and to make it white, so if anyone's ever grown like white asparagus, you have to um, you grow it to a certain point and then you cover it. So the the celery that was ready in November was wrapped in newspapers to blanch it and make it white. Um, but celery that would be ready at, at Christmas time was trenched. So you you dig, you grow the plants, and then you dig a trench next to it and bury it. Um, and that's what blanches it. So in 1922, President Warren G. Harding had our Arvada celery for Thanksgiving. Um, and in Christmas of 1926, President Calvin Coolidge had um, Arvada celery. So that's what um, created our, our um, reputation as the celery capital of the world. Um, and one of the families, the Spano family, um, still isn't has a farm in operation. Uh, it's just outside the border of the city of Arvada in, un- I think it's unincorporated Adams County. Um, so great. That's a great story there um, and a great history in this area. The other things that we like to talk about uh, that are kind of fun firsts um, Arvada was the home of the very first King Supers in Colorado. Uh, that was located in Old Town, where the current Arvada Library is. We had a Safeway, we had um, Piggly Wiggly, we had, and then we had this King Supers. Um, and then we also had the first stoplight in Jefferson County. Um, and what I love about that is so, you know, stop, obviously, this is the first stoplight. People aren't used to stoplights. Um, so people would just stop at the intersection no matter what color it was. And our, um, you know, marshal at the time sort of made the decision that, like, he wasn't going to write any tickets until people could, like, get used to how to um, to travel through a stoplight intersection. Um, so that was the intersection. Um, at Grandview and Old Wads now. That's where that first stoplight was. Um, so, you know, lots to be proud of in Arvada. I did a quick Google search on the first King Supers, and I think it was Lloyd King was the founder of that. Mm-hmm. And the one off 64th and Sheridan is known as the Lloyd King location. I didn't realize why until oh, now. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that either. Well, cool. well, fun fact, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great segue into our uh, our lightning round where we ask guests the same sort of questions each episode to get to know them a little bit better. And so, you know, speaking of celery, what is your favorite thing about Arvada? It can be like a hidden gem or a place or a fact. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, listen to the, the podcast and um, I this, when I was preparing for this, I was trying to think of something different or unique that other people say. Um, but I think what I love about Arvada is our park system. Sorry, this feels like what everybody says. But, um, you know, it's such a, it's so great to live in, in an, in an environment that has so much green space, so much access to green space. Um, it just really improves well-being for me. And so I'm going to just be like everybody else and say parks. 
It, it's still <laughs> Park and Rec Month, so that's still appropriate. Yep. Uh, what is your the first concert you went to or the last one or the best one? All of them, any of those stand out? <laughs> um, so when I was a teen growing up in Columbus, Ohio, um, there was a house uh, on o- Ohio State's campus that had a lot of like punk concerts. Um, and the one that sticks out to me the most, I think about um, the most was I saw Elliot Smith perform um, before he, you know, was on the Academy Awards and everything like that. Um, and it was like so charming and and um, just dear and just a different experience. So um, being with, you know, my high school buds uh, sitting in a in a, you know, punk house listening to um, Elliot Smith uh, just really uh, is a good memory. Sounds great. Um, and what brought you to Arvada? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and I'd have to just say my husband. Um, so we came to Colorado uh, in 2008 for him to go to grad school, and we lived in Boulder County for several years. Uh, and then when we were getting married and looking for a home, he was just like dead set on Arvada. Um, and I kind of went along with it because it, you know, seemed fine. But it, you know, looking back, it we had a we had a kind of social crew in Boulder, um, and we worked in Denver. And Arvada just felt like a great place to be close to all the things we love about Colorado, um, and a really lovely place to to um, you know have a family. So we've been here since um, 2014. What was your first job? Uh, my first job was at the right place in Columbus, Ohio, and that was a dance um, dancewear store and costume shop. Um, and we sold tights and leotards and point shoes to ballerinas. Um, and then in Halloween, we sold um, Halloween costumes to everyone. So it was fun, fun first job. And then finally, uh, what's your favorite project you've done with the city? So controversial, Um, (laughs) but I was the communication lead for the implementation of waste hauling, organized waste hauling. And why it's my favorite project is because as a communication person, um, you know, I just got to really stretch my wings, learn a lot about the community, um, you know, find, navigate, help the organization navigate a really um, challenging project with a lot of moving pieces. And, um, you know, while it was challenging and waste hauling remains challenging for uh, members of the community, uh, as a communication project, I learned so much um, and it was a really valuable time um, for me in my professional growth. Awesome. Yeah, a little um, peel back behind the curtain. Rachel is our um, our boss. She's the director of communications, and you were previously in Katie's role as the yeah. uh, infrastructure communications manager during that project. So Yeah. Yeah, you got to lead through waste hauling when it was really difficult. I just kind of do the day-to-day of <laughs> now what people get with it and, uh, you know, annual rate increases. But other than that, it's just kind of going chugging along for for the future of the program. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we don't often get to do, um, so often our work is kind of just getting information out, um, maybe not getting to spend a lot of time doing the um, kind of strategic planning and, and thinking that is my favorite part of the work. So that's something I look back on fondly. <laughs> yeah. Well, that wraps it up for uh, the interview portion of today's podcast. Rachel, thank you so much for coming on and being our guest today and um, sharing with us the history of the the city and, and ways people can join on our 120th anniversary celebration. Thank you for having me. Thanks. And before we let you go, as always, we have our um, news and upcoming events segment for what's going on in the city. And so um, first, Jefferson County Library is working on um, a plan to redesign the Old Town Library. And so they have some ongoing engagement and information on their website that we'll link to. And coming up in just a couple of weeks is the next bulky item drop-off event on August 10th. That's um, from 9 to 2 p.m. 
And we'll put more info there to remind folks on what they need to know before they go. We'll check out the website to make sure you get all the info you need for that. And um, each year, another thing, um, the utilities department is responsible for setting our water, sewer, and stormwater rates that our water customers pay. And they start those conversations with city council actually really early. So they've already started having conversations um, earlier this year. And the next couple of presentations are coming up. So they had one. In July, they have a workshop where they talk about kind of what they're proposing as the 2025 rates and fees. They'll have another one in August, September, and then they'll work to recommend final rates and get those approved by council in October. So um, just stay tuned if that's something you're interested in. I'll link to our utilities transparency page where we put information about um, how you can learn more about what's going on with that. And then, yeah, as uh, summer continues, we have our next Movies Around Town event coming up on Friday, August 9th, and we'll be showing Back to the Future. They're at Wolf Park. And so, like the first couple events, we'll have some live music beforehand before the movie starts, right, you know, when it gets dark around dusk. Uh, Related to that, we have our People's Choice movie poll open now. So help us determine what movie we're going to show our final Movies Around Town event of the summer on September 6th at Woodrun Park. And so you can go on to Speak Up Arvada. We'll look, link in the show notes how you can participate and help choose which movie. That poll will be open until August 11th. And as we mentioned during the interview with Rachel, our final festival of the summer is coming up. It's Arvada Days on Saturday, August 24th. And that's our end of the summer celebration. And like all our festivals, that's a free for everyone to enjoy, super family friendly event there at Clear Creek Valley Park. Free train rides, and there'll be a, a Nerf zone that we had last year that was a big hit. So, you know, circle that date on your calendar. And thanks again to our guest today, Rachel Kuroiwa. Be sure to catch our next episode where our guest will be the Director of Community and Economic Development, Jessica Gardner. And as always, you can stay in touch with the podcast by visiting our website at arvatico.gov slash podcast. That's where you can subscribe on any different number of platforms, be it Spotify or Apple, Muse or Apple, uh, Amazon as well. And you can always reach us at podcastarvada.org to just share some feedback or ask us questions that we can answer on an upcoming episode. Thank you, everyone, to... Uh, Thank you to all our listeners for for listening to the podcast. We appreciate you so much. Uh, Be sure to subscribe to the show. Give us a rating and review and, and share it with your family and your friends and your neighbors to help continue to grow our audience. Today's podcast was recorded and edited by Arvada Media Services producers James Long and Steve Milkey. And today's fun fact is about the Arvada Old Town Water Tower. It was built in 1910. It stands 152 feet tall holds 150,000 gallons of water and it was decommissioned in 1977. Whoa.